everyone and welcome to prompt number 23. 23 is number one. Eh? If you got that reference, let me know in the comments. Alright, let's see what we got. Full moon and bright sun. Okay, going for opposites. Let's do it. So right off the bat, I already had a pretty general idea of what I wanted to do for this prompt. I've seen a lot of illustrations where people draw the same scene twice. The first time during daylight and the second time at night, or maybe just some time when time has passed. And I always love these because it's a really good opportunity to not only play with the different kinds of light sources in the different way the light source can change the color of a scene, but also it's a fun way to add just a little bit something different to the scene as time has passed. So when I've seen this a few times, people either add something creepy to the scene or maybe they just show that some sort of event has happened between these two scenes and there's a change in the landscape. And I love that. So this is what I was playing with during this prompt. Now that the sketches are done with, the first one I came up with was like a farm where there's cows during the day and at night there's a UFO coming down and it's taking a cow away. So not only could I play with a bright, sunny, green field during the day, but then at night it would be spooky and blue, but you'd have this ray of light coming down from this UFO. So I thought that would be really fun to play with. So with the other two sketches, that's about the general idea I was playing with. The second one was a city landscape and the third being a tree, which as you can see is the one I went with. Because I wanted to make sure to replicate the scene as close as I could, I wanted to just go ahead and trace the first drawing for the second one. And because I don't own a light box, here's a little artist life hack for you. Take your second piece of paper, tape it to the original, and then go up to a window and ta-da! Thank you, bright sun. Eh, that's the prompt. You're now my light box because I am too cheap to buy one. It's not the most ideal because it's a little hard to draw on a window, but heck, it worked for me. Okay. I thought that was a pretty funny segment to include, but now that I'm looking at it in video form, it seems kind of sad. Sure, it was clever at the time, but it just looks sad now. I'm pretty sure light boxes can come pretty cheap, so I should probably just buy one, huh? Well, I guess that's going to be my next video. Free life hacks for the artists that just can't commit to buying a cheap product. Oh boy. And we're moving on. So, when creating the bright sun piece, I really wanted to make sure I kept everything colorful and, well, bright. I wanted to make sure that I was going to be able to get the biggest contrast I could between the two pieces. That way, I could make sure that you really could see the difference between the day and the night and the creepy and the peaceful. Oh good, this is a good opportunity to tell you a story about this piece. While the tops of the tree are still white, do they look like clouds to you? You're probably thinking yes. When I just had it inked, my husband asked me, oh, is that a cloud tree? Oh boy. So I know I kind of have Super Mario Bro syndrome. Uh, that means that my clouds and my bushes and depending on the style of tree, all have the same shape. Have you ever seen Super Mario Bros for the NES where the tree sprite and the cloud sprite are exactly the same, just a different color? Well, that's me. I do that for my bushes and my clouds. And like I said, depending on the style of tree, yep, looks like a cloud tree. Thanks, husband. Thanks for pointing that out. But you know what? I think they're cute and bubbly, so I'm going to embrace my Super Mario Bros syndrome. Okay, I have something to admit as well. I was pretty happy with my idea of having the two pieces kind of fade in and out on this video. So as you've seen, it went from me working on the day piece and it's fading to the night piece. Thought that was a really cute idea. Um, until I realized that my really cheap camera stand has 
it's it's breaking i guess so gradually over time it slowly starts to fall down so it it wasn't as quite as a smooth transition as i had hoped for but I think the effect is still there and I'm going to Amazon.com after this to purchase me a new and better quality stand because gosh darn it, I demand quality on my channel. You guys support me and you deserve the best quality on these videos, right? Yeah, sure. Why not? So overall, I was very pleased with the outcome on these two pieces. I played with color and I think it was quite successful. And I created that, well, I was going to say creepy, but can we be honest, those little kitty creatures are too cute to be creepy. Sure, their eyes are glowing in the dark, but they're so cute. Why do I always do this? Hmm, I'm going to make something spooky. Nope, cute. But you know what I will commit to? Blood and guts. Yep, I will do blood and guts all day long. So I know it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to make those leaves red when they were green in the other piece, but honestly, I think it looks really nice with the difference of colors. And these red leaves are, they're kind of eerie in a way, I guess, so I think it works. I mean, maybe it's just a alien species and in the moonlight they change color. Yep, yep, that's what it is. They are an alien species of plant and I changed color. Yep. Didn't just make that up while I was recording this. Nope. And there it is. Another successful prompt. Let me know in the comments. Do you like the daytime scene more or that spooky nighttime scene? All right, guys. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.